I didn't worry about controversy. I didn't know controversy was something I had to worry about. I was uh, well, probably naive in that regard. But we weren't in danger of, uh, we weren't ever in danger of political censorship. We were you know, subjected to other kinds of censorship all the time, every day. I've just recently heard that they no longer have an office of standards and practices at networks, which shocks me because every network, each, each of the three networks had it then, and it was the, uh, the organ of censorship on the network, which was only, only had um, um, a thinly veiled um, connection to, to politicians. I mean, I may be going too far to say this. Uh, it may not be quite accurate, but the impression that I have is that historically, politicians have wanted to tame television, tame the content of television. That is to say, in terms of, not, not politics, but in terms of um, sex and violence, which are always linked. I'm not sure why, but um, they put pressure on, historically I think they put pressure on television networks and said, if you don't clean up your act, we will, which of course I think would be unconstitutional. I don't think they have the right to, just as they did with movies with the Hayes office, and then the, uh, which grew into the, uh, um, what do you call it? The, uh, what? the MP, MP yeah. AA? Yeah. yeah. Now, so they had us censoring ourselves so that they wouldn't have to censor us. And I think self censorship is the worst kind. But uh, the network not only would censor you, they would get you to collaborate. They would get the artists to collaborate, the writers and directors to collaborate in that self censorship. Here's the funny thing we were censored much more stringently in the beginning when we weren't successful than we were when we were successful. All of a sudden, as soon as we were successful, we could pretty much do and say anything we wanted. In the early days, there were some ludicrous examples of this. The uh, radar at one point in one of the early shows said uh, that he was a virgin. This word was excised by the censor can't say the word virgin. Now, I thought, I thought being a virgin was something that they would like, you know? It's a, a character on tele Today, if a character on television announced he was a virgin, uh, you wouldn't be able to do the show. The network would take it off the air. We don't want any virgins on the air here. What are you doing? Trying to kill us, right? So on, on the contrary, you couldn't say the word virgin. So Larry Gelbart was so pissed at this that he got even with it got even with them by the next week having a character say, when he character was, somebody said to the character, where are you from, soldier? He said, the Virgin Islands, sir. And they couldn't take that out. Well, I mean, there's these silly games. I mean, they would tell you every week, you're saying too many dams. You, you, you should uh, only say three dams, one hell. And of course, you couldn't say son of a bitch. You couldn't say, you know, these are bastard the words that are now, they're, they're spoken, you know, they say, they say, they say stuff that you didn't even say in private then, you know? Uh, uh, we, I, by the way, I, the, the language to me, I think language ought to all be demystified. I don't think, I don't, I don't think that, that um, gutter language ought to have the power over us that it does. It's, it's what it is. It's a thoughtless, crude way of expressing either, either anger or, or an attitude towards something. And you ought, to, you ought to so demystify it that, it's, it that it doesn't have that power anymore and people are going to have to start using real words to express themselves. But I love to curse. I curse uh, blue streak sometimes. I'm, I'm not against language. I'm just interested to see the difference between what we were uh, uh, allowed to say under censorship and what they say nowadays. It's very... It's, it's, it's very interesting, and in addition to that, it was very interesting to see what we were allowed to say before we were successful and how much more we could say afterwards. Larry asked us if we'd like to go down and talk at a 
press conference. I think it was at the end of the first or second year, because um, the networks were starting to do something called, at, uh, under pressure from Congress, starting to do something called the Family Hour. And this was, um, I think, from 8 to 9, you were only supposed to have family-oriented shows. And uh, you could only say and do certain things. And we were objecting to this because it was, in fact, censorship. And my complaint was, if you censor our jokes, then why, what will keep you from censoring our political jokes next? And after that, what will keep you from censoring our political thoughts and, our, and political um, statements that aren't funny? Um, I haven't seen, by the way, I haven't seen that progress, you know, the progress from the first of those to the, to the last of those uh, take place, although I think it's still sensible to be worried about that. Um, but, I, but, w but we, I, they did do the family hour for a while, I think, and then they stopped it because everybody was complaining about it so much. Well into the show, well into the series, when, after we were very popular and, and we could mostly do what we wanted, I had written a show in which uh, um, Margaret Houlihan comes into the tent, into my tent, and she says, uh, at one point in the scene, she says, how dare you parade that thing before me? And she points to a pile of laundry where there's a, an athletic supporter, a jock strap. The network said, you cannot, you cannot name it you cannot show it, you can't even see a bit of white cloth. Now, this is really interesting. You can't see a piece of underwear that a man wears, but every week for several years, we had never been censored seeing ladies, uh, brassiers, panties, st silk stockings, I'd get hit in the face with these things. I'd walk through clotheslines and get tangled up in their underwear. But because, because it came in contact with women's erogenous zones, it was okay, but not men's. Really interesting. It, that was somehow filthy and, uh, and uh, degrading to, to, to do that. And that was after, that was after we, we didn't have much censorship pressure on us. The, it was crazy. I tell you, when you allow censorship, I think you get crazy thinking that just that rises to the surface. When you have a system like that, like, 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 uh, like when you had communism in Russia, you had a black market economy. People find ways around it. Uh, we, uh, um, we, we knew that they would, they would cut in half the number of dams that we had in the script, so we'd put twice as many in. If, if, we, if we felt we needed a, a dam. I mean, it gets so si silly, it's childish. These, it, why should you make such an issue out of the, this language? Because uh, the, the language is, uh, it's just words, you know, in my opinion, anyway.